finished grinding the auxiliary exhaust port, um, came right out to the line. And again, this is pretty much just a roughing operation. There's going to be some blending that goes on next. Uh, but we're going to rotate the cylinder and we're going to use the intake template next. Went ahead and cleaned the cylinder. Same thing we did on the exhaust side. Applied it, put my template in. This is what the, uh, the intake template looks like. And what we're going to be doing is removing part of the, uh, the skirt itself. And to double check it for alignment, I used this set of dividers. Once I scribe my line, I just check on this side and again on this side and make sure that everything is centered, everything's going to come out the same. Um, it's precision work. You know, the templates, he says in the book that uh, Rand McNally makes road maps, but they don't teach you how to drive. Um, it's the same thing uh, with the templates. Just because you have a set of templates, if you try to attempt this with the wrong tools, you're not going to have success with it. Um, I think John Port Cylinders, so you could give him a call if, if it's something uh, you don't want to attempt yourself and you want to purchase the templates. We also do a lot of porting here at Kennel Connor Racing. You can contact me and uh, we can certainly handle this kind of work for you. But we're going to remove this part of the uh, skirt. Okay, to remove this, I'm going to use uh, just a single cut carbide burr. And the right way to do this, and I have one, but that's not going to do you any good if I use it, is a bridge port would just make such fast work out of this. Just set the cylinder up, and um, it would actually take me longer to set this up than it would to just go ahead and, and uh, cut it afterwards with a with a, a carbide end mill. But we're going to stick to the plan. I'm going to use Fordham equipment on this. So to get this rolling, I'm just going to start here and just start diving in. cutter is eventually going to build up with aluminum. And one thing you can do is I keep a little uh, paint cover full of uh, mineral spirits and that's actually what I use for lubrication on this stuff. Okay, this port actually only took about 10 minutes to grind out. Um, you'll notice I got a pretty big angle this way, this way, and this way. There's a reason for that. All I'm doing is following the line. Um, this is just the roughing portion of it. I'm going to actually not only grind this flat, I'm going to bend the radius in this way and I'm going to cut these a little bit different to the inside on this. Um, but that's it on this part and that's the, the roughing end of it's done. Alright, this is looking from the um, bottom of the cylinder and this is the exhaust port that we roughed in earlier. Um, it, the, the angle is not correct. I'm going to blend it right now to the port tunnel and again I'm going to use the number 8 with uh, the extended bit on it. I did the final blend and the lead into the port tunnel on the uh, top of the exhaust port and I'm pretty much done with that. But looking at this thing uh, this is uh, the exhaust port before it goes to the manifold and when you take the gasket and you line this up you can see there's a lot of material in here that can be moved. Um, this is not going to make crazy horsepower but I will tell you from doing engines for 30 years lots and lots and lots of little things add up to big things. So what I did is I used the gasket as a template and I went ahead I blued it and made a line around here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to grind the tunnel out right to this line and I'm going to go in probably about 10 millimeters probably in this far and uh, just open it up. I also have the exhaust manifold here and I'm going to do the exact same thing with this. You can see here yeah, there's a lot of room um, to make this thing blend in together so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, I went ahead and uh, followed my scratch line. You can see I got an angle about like this. And as I said earlier, I'm going to blend this this way. About 10 millimeters, a little bit more than 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm just taking the, the grinder. I call this an anchor. I like to have an anchor down. 
and um, I'm just going to get it in this way now. And again, long sweeping strokes, no pressure. And I'm going to follow this angle, get it close. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start turning the cylinder around and get all of this plumbing right in. You're going to find that your cutter, if you run it really fast, it'll load up get aluminum chips in it and then it's going to start bouncing all over the place and you're going to, going to be standing for the rest of your life to try and get it out. I just use a real simple setup. It's pretty expensive. It's a cover from a paint can. This is just uh, mineral spirits or even kerosene works great. Kerosene is a great, great, great cutting fluid for aluminum. And that'll keep your fit nice and clean. And just keep following your contour. Trying to blend it into the port tunnel until the two lines meet. And that's about it. Okay, I finished my blend with my carbide cutting tool. I went a little bit deeper than I said I was going to, but. Um, which you just want to bring it out until you don't have any sharp humps up or down. Uh, that's definitely going to affect performance. According to the manual, if you should be done at this point. I'm not going to stop here and I never do. Um, I do this for a living and I think the appearance of what we're sending out of here is, is pinnacle. Um, I like to pride myself on my porting looking like a CNC machine. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take two additional steps in here. I'm going to start with a, a um, a sanding drum on a little spiral mandrel and I'm going to go in and really really make this thing smooth. The, the polished exhaust port in my opinion it isn't really going to make any additional horsepower. The reason that I do this is number one when you take your cylinder out of a box when you get a cylinder from Kendall Connor Race and you take it out of the box you look at it the first thing I want you to say is wow. If I send this to you you are not going to say wow I'll take the extra time and I'll polish this port. Uh, the one thing that I will say it does is it deters any kind of carbon buildup. It helps with carbon buildup. When you start, this had, this had minimal buildup in it. This is actually my uncle's cylinder. And he's got a motor in here I'm doing for him. And he rides the dog out of this thing. So there wasn't much, but there was some hard carbon buildup. And it just, it, it kind of sticks to each other. Once you get a little bit in there, it starts building up and sticking. Um, so the polished exhaust with good oil will uh, prevent anything like that from happening. So I'm going to get in here with this and I'm just going to, you know, not press and just, again, take a lot of time and a lot of patience to start moving around. I like to run these mandals wide open and just start knocking it down. You can already see, you can already see that it's starting to pull this out and make it nice and smooth. And I'll do this entire port like this. Okay, I finished chasing this port around with uh, the uh, spiral sandpaper. Next tool I'm going to use is a little mandrel that we made in here. Uh, you might be able to buy them, I don't know. I know they make them for uh, the 1 8 drive. Uh, the, well, actually the bigger grinders, the die grinders. But all I do, I'm using 320 grit, just a piece of sandpaper here. and. This is going to drop any high spots in this cylinder. It's going to knock them all down. Um, it's going to put the finishing touches on it. And again, I run this wide open. 